I'd like to start by asking why streaming analytics has become more popular over the last few years. Fundamentally, this trend is driven by the realization across the business community that real-time and near real-time insights have greater value when compared to insights that are delayed by a few days or even hours. And this is in turn because businesses can make higher quality decisions with fresher insights. And on the flip side, the decision-making usefulness of delayed insights is significantly reduced. And this is evident in the graph that you see here. As data becomes stale uh, over a period of days and months, there's not a whole lot of decision-making value embedded in that intelligence. Now, what are the common real-time analytics use cases out there? One way to segment these use cases is, being, is by looking at the latency characteristics of these use cases. On the far left, you have workloads that need millisecond level end-to-end -end latency. And an example of, of, of applications that need millisecond level latency is using a messaging layer for microservices communication. So instead of using synchronous communication between microservices, you could actually use a streaming or stream storage layer to hold messages and facilitate asynchronous communication. This has the benefit of providing more robust asynchronous uh, communication where the components that make up your microservices mesh are less brittle. Log ingestion is something that most of you are probably familiar with. Uh, almost every production workload needs to handle application logs and surface analytics, whether it's for debugging, or for performance tuning, et cetera. Um, and, and this type of a workload is necessary. So this is where you know, having a few seconds of latency can really make a difference between identifying issues with an application and being able to respond to it very quickly. And lastly, these days, every workload um, uses an online transaction processing database. And being able to export this data into a data lake and then facilitating analytics in a matter of minutes can make a big difference in how businesses respond uh, to uh, customer demand, uh, inventory issues, et cetera. So streaming ETL is, uh, is kind of the last example there of uh, a real-time analytics use case. We can look at streaming analytics by breaking down the components that, that make up uh, a streaming analytics workload. We'll start with, on the far left, with the source. Um, sources can be devices like mobile devices or actually web applications that generate clickstream data. And this type of data is generated at a high velocity and it needs to be captured in a reliable fashion. And for that, you would need something like the stream ingestion layer that is shown here. Uh, reliability is important because if you, if you lose messages that are being generated from the source, then the analytics value on the far right of this workflow is reduced. And once the stream ingestion layer captures these messages, it then deposit it, deposits them into a stream storage layer such as Kinesis data streams. Following this, you can have a number of consumers that can read and process the streaming data in near real time, whether it's for streaming ETL or for aggregations, anomaly detection, et cetera. And the last component here is the destination. So you can have data simply being stored in a data lake for further analytics, or you could then do aggregations in the stream processing layer and then store those aggregates in a database. Okay, having looked at stream processing and how stream 
processing offers benefits for businesses. Let's look at an example architecture. We'll start with this and we'll go over more details around specific customer use cases that have been made possible by stream processing. So we'll look at each of these layers and provide uh, you know, some possible approaches uh, for source, stream ingestion, stream storage, stream processing, and the destination. So let's say we're collecting data from all of these sources that are listed here, all the way from mobile devices to application logs. And here are some options for ingesting this data. You could use the Amazon Kinesis agent. Uh, this is something that you install in your EC2 instances. Let's say that's where your applications are hosted. And this is a great way to, without any code, take application logs and send them on to the stream storage layer, Kinesis in this case. Uh, another approach is if you're collecting strict quick stream data or IoT sensor data, you could use the Kinesis producer library to send data onto Kinesis. And then we have a variety of SDKs for all the programming languages out there from Python, Java, C Sharp, et cetera, to send data to Kinesis. And as I've been mentioning all along, the stream storage layer is Amazon Kinesis data streams. What about processing? So here we have a number of options within the AWS family. Uh, you can do real-time processing in a matter of seconds using Amazon data, Kinesis data analytics. We have two offerings there. We have Amazon Kinesis Data Analytics for SQL and Amazon Kinesis Data Analytics for Java. You could also use the Amazon Kinesis Consumer Library to help you automatically adjust to the scale of data that's coming in to your Kinesis stream. And down below, we have a no-code option with Amazon Kinesis Data Firehose, which lets you essentially plug the data that's coming through your Kinesis data streams to a variety of destinations, such as S3, Redshift, and Splunk. So let's look at a log ingestion example where you need to collect logging data from all of your applications. And these applications could be running on Amazon EC2, they could be running on Amazon Elastic Container Service or ECS or AWS Lambda. These logs are being captured and sent to Kinesis data streams from, wh from where it can be processed uh, using Kinesis data analytics, Kinesis data firehose, uh, and then also deposit it into S3 or Elasticsearch service. Um, and just as an example, through Kinesis Data Firehose, you can actually request that data be persisted on S3 in a columnar format, such as Parquet or ORC, which then makes it easier to use Amazon Athena to process these logs. Another popular use case is supply chain management. And this is important because, you know, supply chain as a uh, vertical involves data coming and going at a very high rate. So you have supply chain employees making changes on mobile clients, desktops, etc. And as the data is being updated you know, in warehouses um, and anywhere your inventory is being kept, um, all of this data is being streamed in through uh, an application tier, which is represented by um, application, AWS application auto-scaling in through Kinesis data streams. And it can then be processed in near real time using AWS Lambda. And the results of that processing can be stored in Amazon Elasticsearch service, where it can then be visualized using Kibana. Uh, 